The acute kidney injury can be divided into three broad etiologic categories, pre-renal AKI, intrinsic AKI, and post-renal. Pre-renal refers to hypoperfusion of the kidneys without a parenchymal damage. Post-renal, or obstructive AKI, is characterized by acute block of the urinary tract. In intrinsic dysfunction, acute damage to the renal parenchyma exists, like acute tubular necrosis, acute interstitial nephritis, or, or acute glomerular nephritis. The pre-renal AKI, or transient AKI, were synonymous with hypovolumic AKI and fluid responsiveness. This is no longer the case. Pre-renal cause. The common form of pre-renal causes include azotemia, which is the elevation of blood urea nitrogen, accounting for 40 to 80 percent of all the AKI cases. When the reduction in urine output, or raisin serum creatinine, is due to reduced renal plasma or blood flow, glomerular hydrostatic pressure reduces. The cause is considered to be pre-renal. Intrinsic renal causes. These causes may be directly intrinsic, or in some cases, pre-renal or post-renal causes progressing to tubular injury. Intrinsic renal causes can be classified according to the primary focus of injury. Post-renal AKI. It is the last common type of AKI. Post-renal AKI occurs when the flow of urine is either partially or completely blocked resulting in a buildup of back pressure within the renal tubules. This will lead to a raised Bowman's capsule, hydrostatic pressure, a pressure which opposes filtration, and thereby reduced GFR. The obstruction may occur anywhere from the renal pelvis to the tip of the urethra. But in general, for a patient with normal functional kidneys, a bilateral obstruction is necessary for AKI to occur. Pathophysiology of AKIs is explored in the next two slides. The pathophysiology of AKIs include pre-renal azotemia, is when the renal perfusion pressure decreases to a point at which GFR falls. Normalization of renal blood flow, if possible, promptly restores renal function. Hypovolumia causes pre-renal azotemia, which results from gastrointestinal losses, hemorrhage, venous pooling, sequestering of fluid in third spaces, excessive urinary or skin losses of sodium and water. Patients exhibit signs of hypovolemia, including thirst, diminished skin turgor, mucous membrane moistness, and postural hypotension. When glomerular perfusion is threatened, autoregulatory mechanisms help maintain glomerular capillary pressure. If autoregulatory mechanisms are inoperative, a given reduction in renal blood flow provokes a sharper decline in GFR. Reduced renal perfusion slows down the flow of filtrate through the renal tubules, enhancing the reabsorption of urea. Because creatinine is not reabsorbed in the renal tubules, its clearance is unaffected by these nephronal factors. Thus, the clearance of urea is reduced disproportionately to that of creatinine, explaining the unusually high BUN creatinine ratio that is often seen in pre-renal states. In such situations, the BUN creatinine ratio typically exceeds 20 to 1. A high urea creatinine ratio is not pathognomonic of pre-renal azotemia. Next, we will cover the clinical presentations of AKIs. As acute kidney injury is usually the result of some other disease process in the body, the symptoms are both the causes of AKI as well as the AKI itself. The symptoms are categorized based on the phase of the disease. Pre-renal symptoms include diarrhea, bloating, and other gastrointestinal disturbances. Intrarenal symptoms or acute interstitial nephritis include wheeze, rash, itching, pruritus, Post-renal symptoms include urinary urgency, hesitancy, and frequency of urination. The clinical features of AKIs are given in the next slide. The patient with acute kidney injury most commonly present with dreamia-like symptoms, which include reduced urine output, shortness of breath, pedal edema, chest pain or uremic pericarditis, 
anorexia, nausea, and vomiting, weakness and myoclonic jerks, seizures, confusion, and coma. The symptoms of uremia include bleeding tendencies, shortness of breath if volume overload is present, weight loss, nocturnal urination, pale urine, oliguria, pressure or difficulty urinating, abnormal heart rhythm, muscle paralysis. In addition to these, other less common symptoms include seizures, if the blood urea is very high, shortness of breath, decreased osmolality, increased urinary sodium retention, pericarditis, pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, decreased calcium and bicarbonate, defect in platelet functioning. The evaluation of AKIs is given in the following slides. As the symptoms of renal injury are nonspecific, the history provided by the patient is not always of diagnostic help. In patients with CKD, the history may be useful in establishing whether renal dysfunction is truly a progressive, long-standing problem versus AKI. A patient with long-standing loss of appetite and pruritus is more likely to have CKD than AKI. The avenues of fluid loss are identifiable. Exposure to nephrotoxic agents or a recent episode of sustained hypotension suggests the possibility of ATN. Symptoms of renal colic, abnormal voiding pattern, or a history of genitourinary malignancy point toward an obstructive cause. The physical examination provides diagnostic information regarding volume status. Diminished skin turgor, sunken eyes, dry mucous membranes, the absence of auxiliary sweat, or orthostatic hypotension supports a diagnosis of pre-renal azotemia. Hypertension in patients with AKI should raise suspicion of intrinsic renal disease. The treating doctor must be alert for signs of systemic disease that can cause acute renal injury, including vasculitis, endocarditis, and sepsis. Bladder distension and prostatic enlargement suggest an obstructive cause. AKI's diagnosis will be discussed next.